How many of you at school want to pull out your hair because you have horrible tenants using your facilities? Those sports clubs that use your grounds and leave your grounds untidy or your church groups that use your buildings and they don't clean up properly. How many of you are experiencing those tensions and you just want to get rid of everybody? Hi guys, yes, that is our topic today. I want to talk about the SGP is being a landlord or a venue hire because the law allows you to allow groups to use your facilities. Otherwise, your facilities will just be standing there. Over the weekends, nobody will be on the grounds. And of course, we know in our community areas, in our poor community areas especially, there's always the risk of vandalism, burglaries and uh, drugs and ah, just so many things happening so it's always a good idea to allow the community to use your space and then I just want to make reference to um, the governing body function that we're talking about and that is in the South African Schools Act um, section 20 and today we are looking at section 20 subsection 2 because that is where you get your power from as a governing body to say that you may um, allow other groups to use your facilities okay so let's just have a look at that and read it i had it open just before i started but now of course it's missing in action now right so let's just have a look at that it's section 20 um subsection 2 it says the governing body may allow the reasonable use, operative word is reasonable, reasonable use of the facilities of the school for the community, social and school financing purposes, subject to such reasonable and equitable conditions as the governing body may determine, which may include the charging of a fee or a tariff which accrues to the school there you can see that the law allows you to be a landlord and a venue hire so you may rent out or lease or hire out your school facilities to various organizations especially those organizations that will help your school to develop so you can hire out your facilities to the sports clubs in your area, to social groupings in your area, and um, to other organizations. But I think the key thing that schools must remember is that, yes, they will probably be on the premises, and so they will help you with the security, because we mentioned all the possible hazards and dangers that schools experience and the losses that schools experience because the buildings are vacant over the weekends and during the holidays. So there is that security element that the, the organizations will offer the school. But you also need to see whether those organizations are adding value to your school and whether you are not just picking up more expenses because they are using the facilities, right? So just think if you have an organization at the school, it means that you must allocate a part of the building or a section of the building to that organization. They will probably use your ablution blocks or your toilet facilities, your bathroom facilities. So there needs to be sanitation and there needs to be things like toilet paper, in your um, ablution blocks or toilet facilities, then you they are going to have litter. So obviously they will also be filling your refuse bins and um, they're going to use electricity. So that means that your electricity costs will also increase. They are going to make use of the water. So your water is going to increase. So those utility services that you are offering at the school must be factored in when you have an agreement with those groups. You cannot just allow them to use the premises without making some form of contribution. And it doesn't have to be a financial contribution because many of our community schools have such a high level of unemployment anyway. So perhaps those organizations are just offering a service to the community 
perhaps it's women's groups or men's groups or um, social clubs for young people and they don't really have money but you can find a way where they can pay you in kind what do they offer who is coming to these clubs are they servicing your parents are they offering the services to your young people? You know, are your learners and parents benefiting directly as well from these services that are being offered? And so those are things that you need to consider when you allow people to use the school buildings because there's a very strong um, move to get the school to integrate with the community that it's in. Right, so what better way to allow the community to use your facilities? But you cannot allow the community just to use the facilities and then you pick up additional costs. And most of our schools are already struggling financially. So those are things that you have to take into account. Right? So your agreements that you have with the groups that are using your your premises or your facilities. Do you have a service? level agreement with those organizations in place right and what happens if they don't honor those agreements um do they do you check to see if they have um insurance liability as well because what happens if one of the people who are coming to that social club or playing the sport or um, anybody who's attending those clubs or groups what happens if they get injured at your school do you have to cover that is that part of your insurance liability or are you discussing those things with the groups that want to use your premises as well and then of course if it's an organization that works with children then there are other legal requirements in terms of what must be in place and what um, guarantees do you have that they are covered that the children are protected because they are vulnerable and they're open to all kinds of exploitation and abuse so i'm just raising this because we we need to on the one hand allow the community to use the school and it's a way of generating funds as well because those who can pay cash for the hiring of the facilities or the use of the facilities, they need to make a financial contribution. And then of course, you don't want to exclude those groups that are helping the community to have services. And so you benefiting from that because your children and your parents will benefit from that. Right? So you don't want to exclude them from becoming part of the broader community where the school is playing that role to act as a networking point but you also need to think about the value that it offers besides just bringing in general value you really have to sit down and and examine what exactly are you getting from the various organizations in terms of support and adding value to your parents and your learners and of course the broader community okay so i thought i'll underscore that point in this session um, in terms of having opening up the school yes being aware that you now have landlord status or if you're hiring out your facilities then you are the event hirer or the venue hirer and with that comes responsibilities so do you have um, all those documents in place to make sure that that partnership between you and the the venue hirer or the tenant will know exactly how the relationship works okay so i think that is probably enough just for the introduction because i want to speak about um who you know ask questions about who's ex do you know who's in your school how many groups are using your school um do you have a, a variety of different services at your school and um are there perhaps opportunities for you to find other organizations in the community to use your school but we'll chat about that in the next session on you as the landlord or the venue hire this is just an introduction and i hope you enjoyed it and that as part of your homework you can start looking at who exactly 
is currently using your facilities, right? Which, who are the groups? Um, when do they use it? Is it on a monthly basis, weekly basis? Um, how obvious, how often are they using it? And what services are they providing? And are those services also beneficial to your parents and your learners? And are those services also beneficial for the broader community? Or is somebody just operating um, on a profit-making basis? So on that note, I'll see you for a follow-up session on the governing body as a landlord or a venue hire. Go out, stay empowered, continue growing, and stay inspired.